Assalamu alaikum and hello. In this video, we are going to continue with the ionization energy. So, what is that actually? Ionization energy has a few definitions due to different type of energy. So, I'm going to focus the general one. So, this is the definition for general ionization energy. Ionization energy is the minimum energy. So, energy yang paling sedikit yang diperlukan to remove 1 mole of electrons from 1 mole of neutral gas atom. So, that is the general one. When we want to make it more specific, for example, we have the first ionization energy. What is the definition for first ionization energy? It's still the minimum energy required to remove one mole of electron. But in this case, I'm going to make it more specific from one mole of gases atom at ground state. So, perbezaannya kita mempunyai perkataan ground state. So, itu yang menunjukkan difference between the general definition and the more specific definition for first ionization energy. So, for example, saya ada Mg, magnesium atom, in gaseous state. So, nampak dekat sini, gaseous atom sebab tu magnesium sekarang dalam phase gas. And then, dia akan produce di mana dia donate one electron ataupun dia remove one electron to make it as Mg+. Masih lagi phase gas plus E minus. Then what will happen here? Energy yang berlaku adalah in positive value. Dan ini yang kita masukkan sebagai first ionization energy. So I'm going to explain a bit more macam mana kita ingin tahu kenapa magnesium sekarang dalam bentuk gas and kenapa charge dia hanya Mg plus. Bukan biasanya kita dengar adalah Mg2 plus ke? So, itu yang saya akan bagi tahu kepada awak sekarang. So, kita ada magnesium. Di mana magnesium, the proton number is 12. So, I'm going to write the electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So, as you see here, you got 3s2 as your valence shell. So, when we want to form the most stable magnesium adalah di mana kita akan donate two electrons. So, the most stable oxidation state for magnesium adalah di mana kita akan donate dua electrons, dia akan jadi positive two. So, how this process happen? Sebenarnya, proses yang terjadi adalah ionization energy. Tapi, dia berlaku dalam dua step. Di mana step pertama adalah first ionization energy dan step kedua adalah second ionization energy. For your syllabus, you are not going to focus for the second ionization energy. Tapi at least saya akan tunjukkan macam mana cara magnesium form daripada Mg kepada Mg2+. So, we got Mg, magnesium, in gaseous state. So, ini adalah gaseous atom. And after that, what will happen? Dia akan donate electrons to form Mg+. Plus. Masih lagi dalam gases phase plus E-. Minus. So as you see here, the charge for Mg adalah 0. The charge for Mg+, plus adalah plus 1. And then plus dengan E-, minus negative 1. So total here adalah 0. Sama seperti left hand side. So, awak akan lihat, inilah proses yang kita panggil as first ionization energy. That is the symbol. And then, the next one, kita nak hasilkan Mg2+. As I mentioned before, we are going to form another process of ionization energy di mana kita akan namakan sebagai second ionization energy. So, daripada product side, you got Mg plus in gas phase. So, I put Mg plus in gases phase. I donate lagi satu electrons. Tapi sekarang, 
Dia bukan lagi atom. Dia sudah jadi gases ion. So, itu beza dia dengan yang atas. Ini gases atom. Itu adalah gases ion. And then, what will happen? Dia akan donate one more electrons. So, what will happen? The charge is going to be Mg2+. plus. Masih lagi dalam gas phase. Dan elektron yang dia donate adalah satu. And seterusnya, inilah yang kita namakan sebagai second ionization energy. So, bila awak kira adakah awak punya equation is balanced. So, we got positive one here. And after that, for Mg2+, plus, the charge is positive two. And then, negative one for the electrons, you will have positive one. So, so the equation is balanced. So, inilah yang proses yang dinamakan sebagai ionization energy. Di mana awak just tahu je the most stable oscillation state for magnesium adalah kita donate dua elektron. Tapi macam mana? Apa yang terjadi? Inilah proses yang terjadi. For the next one, kita akan continue di mana energy is required to remove electron which attracted to the positive charge of the nucleus. Kerana itulah ionization process is always endothermic. Seperti mana yang awak nampak nilai dia has a positive value. And the next one magnitude of ionization energy indicates the strength, kekuatan of the attractive force. Di mana daya tarikan nukleus dengan valence electrons. So, apa yang dimaksudkan dengan bahagian statement yang terakhir ini. Dia ber, dia maksudkan, when you have higher ionization energy, it means that attraction between nucleus and valence electrons very, is very, very strong. So, that's why ini terhasil due to the smaller size of atom. That's why this situation akan make it more difficult to remove the valence electron. Kerana daya tarikan tu yang kuat, dia tak nak lepas. Okay, so factors affecting the magnitude of ionization energy macam biasa, dia ada tiga. Di mana kita ada atomic radius Effective nuclear charge dan juga shielding effect. So, atomic radius di mana sekiranya awak ada larger atomic radius, the attraction becomes weaker. So, it's more easy to remove the electrons. Makes that lower ionization energy. And seterusnya, sekiranya ada higher effective nuclear charge, dalam case ini, ini adalah ZEF. So, attraction to become stronger. Then, ionization energy is higher. And last one, shielding effect. If you got the larger shielding effect, attraction becomes weaker and your ionization energy is lower. So, case yang sama, as you learned before, if you got the fact the effective nuclear charge kita akan gunakan layout PSAS and then untuk shielding effect kita akan gunakan NSAS so trend yang kita hafal sebelum ni kita memang tahu proton increase, effective nuclear charge increase, attraction increase, size smaller dan satu lagi yang kita boleh tambah adalah di mana IE bila dia smaller size dia akan makin Susah untuk buang elektron tersebut. So, ionization energy akan tinggi. And then, case untuk N SAS, bila N awak bertambah, shielding effect juga bertambah, attraction becomes weaker, your size becomes larger. Dan case di sini, ada satu yang kita boleh tambah juga, untuk ionization energy, dia akan makin berkurang kerana attraction tu dah loose. So to make it more easier for you, awak boleh lihat dalam bentuk variation of first ionization energy across the period based on this diagram. Sebenarnya dia masih lagi menggunakan 
teknik yang sama seperti mana yang saya ajar Kita gunakan pizzas untuk across the period So proton number increases And the effective nuclear charge also increases Dan dalam kes ini kerana nuclear charge or number of proton tu bertambah Tapi inner electrons remain the same And then seterusnya, attraction tu akan become stronger. So, you will have stronger attraction between valence electrons and nucleus and the size decreases. So, bila size tu decreases, electrons tu are being pulled towards the nucleus. So, more energy is needed to remove the valence electrons. That's why first ionization energy increases. Saya fokus kepada first ionization energy. Saya tak fokus secara general. Okay. Next one, kita ada variation going down the group. Masih lagi N SAS di mana number of shell number of shell increases. So, shielding effect also increases. And your attraction becomes Weaker between valence electron dan juga nucleus It makes that the atomic radius increases Ataupun becomes larger So bila larger, dia punya attraction dah weaker So size dia sangat loose Easy to remove the valence electrons Which makes that the first ionization energy decreases So, itulah cara di mana awak nak faham tentang ionization energy. So, please remember about the layout dan benda yang paling penting adalah awak kena faham macam mana nak tentukan size itu kecil atau besar. Apabila awak faham tentang atomic size, awak boleh jawab semua benda tentang electronegativity ataupun ionization energy. So that's all for this video. For the next video, kita akan fokus tentang anomalous behavior of the first ionization energy between period 2 and period 3. So I'll see you in the next video.